Hello everyone, this video covers uh, section 4.9 which is called anti-derivatives and like the name is suggesting it's going to be the opposite of a derivative now you won't be able to do anti-derivatives unless you can do derivatives just like in math for example you can uh, divide without knowing how to, to multiply okay now, the better that you are at taking derivatives, well, the easier that it will be to do anti-derivatives. So, for example, let's say you have the function here, and then you have the derivative here. Okay, so first we're going to do the stuff we've been doing so far. Let's say that f of x is equal to x squared. Well, clearly the derivative is... 2x. So therefore the antiderivative of 2x is going to be x squared. So therefore you can think of the original function as the antiderivative. We have a better name for this which we'll use soon. But for now this is what it is. Now the only thing you have to be careful here is that notice that whether um, the function was just x squared or x squared plus 5, the derivative is still going to be just 2x. So this plus 5 is going to be very, very important because the derivative will be the same if this was plus a or minus 10, right? So therefore, you want to get to the actual function. So if the derivative is 2x, well, the original function was in this one. Was it this one or was it that one? So for that reason, in general, the anti-derivative, let's say of 2x, is going to be x squared plus on constant, and then you have to figure out the, the constant. But it should be obvious why you need to have the, the constant. We'll worry about this constant in a few minutes. For now, let's just check that you understand what antiderivative is. So let's say that here you have tangent x. Remember, the derivative of tangent is obviously secant squared. So therefore, the antiderivative of secant squared is going to be tangent plus some constant. All right, let's do let's look to a couple more. Remember you have the square root of x. What was the derivative of that? It was one over two radical x. So the antiderivative of this is just this. In other words, you should find out where did this came from. Okay? Now I'm gonna use now notation that we're gonna be using in um, chapter 5 and the antiderivative is technically called a integral antiderivative that's that's technically what it means but this is going to be replaced by this symbol which is called the integral and that's the notation we're going to be using many times now, from now on. I still will use the word antiderivative, but very soon it's going to be replaced by just integral. And this is what I mean. The integral, therefore, of 2x dx is going to be x squared plus c. Then, at the beginning, you should always check that this is the case. So, what is the derivative of this? The derivative of x squared is 2x plus 0. So this gives you the integral, which is this value. So therefore, this is fine. Or what is the antiderivative of secant squared? Well, it will be tangent x plus c. Why? And remember, you should definitely check always at the beginning because the derivative of tangent x plus some constant, the derivative of this is secant squared x plus zero. All right, so now in general, for polynomials, 
remember that we have this before the derivative with respect to x of x to the n power remember was equals to n x to the n minus 1 we have done this like 5000 times now so therefore the new notation is going to be this the integral of x to the n dx is going to be x to the n plus 1 or n plus 1 plus on constant now if we check the derivative of this notice that this will be n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 notice that this will cancel and you end up with exactly with x to the n so that's why this this works so therefore the integral of 2x dx was equals to 2 the integral of x dx which was 2x to the 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus c notice that this will cancel you end up with x squared plus c which should be obvious now in the homework the question in 4.9 is still not using the integral sign but you can start using it right now a typical question is something like this it tells you the derivative is equals to this and it gives you this initial condition so you need this need to figure out the value of the constant the value of the constant okay therefore if we want the antiderivative remember the integral is going to be the antiderivative so the integral of f prime dt is going to be the integral this is going to give you what we want which is f of t this will be integral of t plus since this is with respect to t this should be dt now just like when you take derivatives it's better to write this as the exponent on the numerator uh, notice the 1 over t cubed from algebra this is the same thing as t to the negative 3 so therefore this will be the integral of t to the negative 3 dt now the integral for therefore for t like if we use the this rule remember the integral of t to the n t is going to be t to the n plus 1 or n plus 1 plus c which is the formula i just mentioned in the previous page so it will be t square over 2 because the value for n for that one is 1 and then this one is going to be t to the negative 3 plus 1 over negative 3 plus 1 and then you only need one constant in theory you can have a constant for this one and a constant for that but if you add the two you still get the same same constant therefore you simplify this it will give you one half t square minus one half from here t to the negative two plus the constant c and this is what f of t is going to be now if we want to figure out the value for the constant notice that they give you a initial condition they tell you when x is or t is one y will be six all right so therefore if we use the initial condition which is this it's telling you that y is six when t is one so it will be one half times one square one to the negative two and notice that this will be six uh, this will be one half minus one half plus six that means that the value for c is equals to to six so therefore this implies that the function the original function which is the antiderivative is going to be one half t square minus one half t to the negative two plus six now you should check that by taking the derivative of this 
you will get exactly this and we can do that right now look the derivative of this the two and the two cancel so you end up with t the minus two will cancel the minus two minus two minus one will give you minus three and the derivative of six is zero so therefore this is without a doubt the antiderivative of this and that's it you can also do this process twice and by that I mean, let's say that the original question has two derivatives. So you have to do this process twice. The first antiderivative will give you the first derivative and the second antiderivative will give you the original function. So let's say that f double prime is equals to the q root of x minus cosine of x. Now, since you have uh, two derivatives, you're going to require two initial conditions to figure out the value of the, of the original function. So you need to have this given too. Otherwise, you just have the constant, so you won't be able to figure out the value for the constant. Also, remember that when you're taking derivatives, and it's going to be the same, it's going to be the same thing, or true also for integrals, it's better to write this as this. So if we take the integral, it's going to give you the first antiderivative. So this will give you the integral of x to the one-third of the x minus the integral of cosine x dx. Now for the first part, which is this one, for this part, you need this, this formula. Here the value for n is one-third. So here you will have x to the one third plus one over one third plus one. And there is an easy way to deal with this, I'll show you right now. And then the antiderivative of cosine is sine. Why? Because the derivative of sine is cosine. So you have to be very careful with that. Plus the first constant. All right, so you simplify this, you end up with f prime is equals to um, x to the four thirds. Now on the bottom you are dividing by four thirds, so it's always easier to just multiply by the conjugate, and this works every time. Minus sine of x plus the first constant. Now, if you take the integral again, so the f is going to be the antiderivative of f prime, like we have done before. So therefore, this will be the integral of 3 fourths x to the 4 thirds minus the integral of sine x dx plus the integral of the first constant. Okay. All right, so the constant you can take it out the three fourths and x to the three fourths. So, sorry, four thirds plus one this is going to give you seven thirds. So, this will be x to the seven thirds times three over, over seven. And then the integral of sine is minus cosine. Okay, be careful with this part. Because the derivative of cosine is minus sine, so you need the minus to give you all of this. Now the integral of the constant, c1, is just going to give you x, because the derivative of c1x is going to be x. Just like the integral of phi, it will be phi x. Why? Because the antiderivative of phi x, will, I mean the derivative of phi x is phi. And then you need another constant, which I'm going to call it c2. So this is what you have so far. f of x is going to give you 9 over 28 x to the 7 thirds plus cosine of x plus c1 of x plus c2. Now to figure out the, the constants you need to plug in this, these values. For example, f of 0 equals to 2 
This implies that 2 will be 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus C2. So that means that C2 is equals to, to 1. Okay. And then F of 2 equals to 0. That implies that 0 it will give you it will be equals to 9 over 28 to the to 2 to the 7 thirds plus cosine of 2 plus c1 times 2 plus c2 which is equals to 1 and from here with some algebra you can figure out the value for c1 and that's it all right let's try a couple more just to refresh your memory from previous derivatives so the next example should be obvious but if they're not you should definitely review the derivative rule you had before so for example the antiderivative let's say f of x is equals to 1 plus f prime is equals to 1 over x squared therefore that means the antiderivative of this is equals to tangent inverse why because the derivative tangent inverse was equals to 1 over x squared okay now remember that f prime was equals to this then that means that the anti derivative of this is equals to sine inverse and so forth okay so therefore if let's say f prime was equals to the square root of x plus 1 plus 1 over x squared that would mean that f would be the integral of x to the 1 half plus the integral of the x over 1 plus x squared so this will be x to the 3 halves times 2 two thirds plus tangent inverse of x plus c or two thirds x to the three halves plus tangent inverse x plus c and that's it if the initial condition is not given you cannot find the value for c but there is nothing wrong with just having plus plus c okay or let's try one more like that let's say that f prime was equals to minus um, secant square x plus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x square plus uh, 1 over x square okay. so this implies that f will be the integral of minus secant square x dx plus the integral of this plus the integral of x to the minus 2 okay. then the integral of secant squared is going to be minus tangent why? because there will be the tangent is secant squared and then this one is sine inverse x and then this will be x to the minus 2 plus 1 over minus 2 plus 1 which is minus x to the minus 1 that will be minus x to the minus 1 plus c or just minus tangent x plus sine inverse x minus 1 over x plus c again if the initial condition is not given you cannot find the value for c and that's it so you can see this is pretty simple as long as you remember the, the derivatives so you know the derivative of this is this then the antiderivative this will be the original function and so forth all right so let's do one last example this is one from from physics here let's say the acceleration which remember acceleration is second derivative is equals to three cosine t minus two sine t and the initial conditions is this that the original position is zero and the initial velocity is, is four so therefore the antiderivative 
uh, or the acceleration is going to be the velocity or the velocity is the integral of the acceleration so this will be the integral of 3 cosine t minus 2 the integral of sine t which uh, the integral of cosine is sine so it will be 3 sine t why because the derivative of sine is cosine and then this will be minus 2 times minus cosine t why because the derivative of cosine is minus sine so you need a, the minus plus on constant which you call it c1 okay. so therefore the velocity will be equals to 3 uh, sine t plus 2 cosine t plus c1 then if you want the position you want to integrate this so it will be the integral of 3 sine t dt plus all of this you have a dt plus 2 the integral of cosine t dt plus the integral of c1 dt and here we run out of space but this will be um, minus 3 cosine t for the first part then plus 2 sine t plus c1t and then plus c2 and to figure out this value in this one you have to use these values and you'll get the value for c1 and c2 and that's it